They call the mountain Steamboat, though it's never gone anywhere. And the men who maintain the highway often feel a bit tied down too. After all, they live and work 400 miles from zero. The town down there was born in 1951. It may die again in 60 or 70 years, 734 miles from zero. The old timers came in here before 1900. They've seen their town boom twice and die twice. Of course, the next boom is always just around the corner, 926 miles from mile zero of the Alaska Highway. Mile Zero is in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. Jumping off point for all who would go north on wheels. Truckers, oil teams, salesmen, settlers, fortune hunters, tourists heading north down the Alaska Highway. Once a year, as summer draws to a close, there is unusual activity in the branch of the Public Library Commission at Dawson Creek. The regional librarian is preparing for a journey far into the hinterland of northern British Columbia. A journey from mile zero for himself and hundreds of books. The White Tower, The Robe, The Overloaded Ark, Anthony Adverse. Books for all who live along the Alaska Highway. This trip, the regional librarian has a new assistant driver, his own boss, superintendent of the Public Library Commission. First day on the road, four stops roll by, and they reach mile 295, an army camp where the library is in the fire hall. Up here, the Army is concerned with highway maintenance. Toll the bell for murder, the hedge of thorns, two solitudes, the waste makers, dead on arrival. Fort Nelson, mile 300, is full of bounce, and the area is full of oil. The lid blew off just a few years ago. Now some of the world's biggest gas and oil wells are in this region. The oil boom has brought in surveyors, drillers, construction types, operators, some of them mobile, some permanent. And where there are people, there is the library service. Here at Fort Nelson, the community library is in the office of a motel. The motel owner is the volunteer librarian. Without her and her counterparts along the highway, the best efforts of the professional librarian would be in vain. But as it is, the fascinating realms of literature are accessible to all. The Last of the Mohicans, Treasure Island, Wind in the Willows, Winnie the Pooh, Black Beauty. <laughs> Under wartime pressure, the Alaska Highway was constructed in eight months the equivalent of a road from Paris to Moscow. Now the maintenance and improvement of the highway is a never-ending struggle between men and machinery and mountains, distance, rivers, muskeg, weather, and dust.
Once virtually unknown, the mountains have become familiar landmarks to the maintenance men and their families who live along the highway. Summit Lake, highest point on the Alaska Highway. Elevation, 4,250 feet. Summit Lake Maintenance Camp, mile 392. The library is in the school. The teacher is the wife of a maintenance man. She's here the year round and is the volunteer community librarian. The school also houses a children's library, but the commission sent it up earlier by transport. Three times a year, a new box of books arrives for the adult library, the undefeated, fires of youth, a many colored coat, the tin flute, the Plouffe family. For the youngsters, The Wizard of Oz, Snow White, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. Books about this very country, The Mysterious North, Rhymes of a Sourdough, The Royal Road to Romance. Liard Hot Springs, mile 496. A chance for a rest, and even in the coldest weather, a warm swim. More than 600 miles have rolled by. The truck leaves the Alaska Highway and heads down a side road. Ahead, 68 miles of clear sailing. Once the road is rebuilt, the next stop will be deep in the Cassiar Mountain Range. Dame Mountain used to be the highest peak in the Cassiar Range, but now it's being cut down to size. This far north, even a whole mountain of asbestos was economically worthless until the Alaska Highway passed within reach. The ore is mined in the clouds, then dropped by aerial conveyor thousands of feet to the mill. On the future of asbestos depends the future of the town of Cassiar. So far, the future looks good. The North has many minerals. Eventually, other Cassiars will spring up and flourish. And then, as now, the Public Library Commission's free book service will bring the world of literature into this world of mountains. The next community library is 364 miles away by road and seems half a century away in time. Back to the gold rush days and the old mining town of Atlin. Population at the turn of the century, about 10,000. Now, about 180 souls. Here, the community library is given precious space in a private home. The new stock is given careful scrutiny by keen borrowers, and then, 
a list of suggestions for the next shipment. How to make an electric organ, the art of Italian cooking, Greek philosophy, needlework as a hobby, ah, wilderness. <laughs> Atlan is their last stop. The men have traveled more than 1,100 miles. Wait a minute. Only 52 miles more to Whitehorse? Why not? Whitehorse is a frontier town, short on history, but long on romance. It's been through a gold rush, a tourist rush, and a transportation boom. The swift Yukon River and the old sternwheelers have witnessed many a strange sight. There are many reminders that Whitehorse knew a robust transportation era well before the days of the Alaska Highway and mobile libraries. The library team is safely back at mile zero before winter arrives. Their two-week journey has brought the services to an area roughly the size of Denmark, Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, and Switzerland. But the value of a library service is measured not in terms of the vast region served, but in the impact on the human heart of that closest of all good friends, a book. muslin with a hundred frills and flounces and knots of pale colored ribbon. She was bareheaded, but she balanced in her hand a parasol. It must come sometimes to jam today, Alice objected. No, it can't, said the queen. It's... But a good book is the precious lifeblood of a master spirit embalmed and treasured up on purpose to a life beyond life.